a background from Pakistani context where church is facing a lot of lot of pressure, where uh, forced conversions, where forced abduction, where marginalization, persecution, blasphemy laws, so lots of lots of bitterness. Even in the in the in the Christian community, worship community, they have been uh, passed through, and it's hard for even Christians to forgive. Uh, those uh, who has done wrong with them. But in my personal life story also, uh, it is hard even as a minister and a service uh, uh, service and Lord's ministry, sometimes it's hard for us even to forgive others. But this story and this connection, which God orchestrated, spirit led, and we praise God even after 10 years, we have lots of lots of incidents and chances where God crossed our road to encourage and to uh, and to talk uh, and help each other growing in God's grace. Dr. Diane, thank you very much all the way joining us from North Carolina. So I heard you are not feeling well. So how are you doing? Where are you right now? And uh, thank you very much for joining. It's such a joy and it's such a joy that you would wait for my voice to heal. And right now I'm doing well and look forward to this discussion. Well, thank you very much. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in my own personal life and from last 10 years, there are lots of lots of chances when I met Dr. Diane. So my first interaction was through social media. Then second one was in 2012 when I visited her home, met her beautiful family and, uh, and, uh, and a God, man of God, his, her, her husband, uh, uh, Brother Glenn, and, uh, uh, and all kids and family men. And we spent a lot of good time. And then we met couple of times other, I will share these instances and shipping stories. But Dr. Diane, would you please kindly share and tell us about your life story, especially your ministry and how God brought you at this point, and especially how you gave your life and, and, and thought about to choosing a path to serve Lord. I have been a Christian since I was a child, came to faith. Christian home, met and married my man, the man who still after 55 plus years is my husband. And we were went into ministry together immediately. So from the age 18, I have been serving in the church, my husband doing music and eventually pastoral. And in 1986, God up just entered our life completely turned us around and called us to cross-cultural ministry and we committed to go we resigned our church we kind of did everything wrong that missionaries are supposed to do but god was kind and and led us in ways and eventually we moved to europe we worked in in egypt for a couple of years and and then did bible smuggling and and um training behind the Iron Curtain for a couple of years. And then when the wall fell, the Lord allowed us to move to Europe. And I trained as an intercultural trainer, but God had a, a, another ministry for me that I could, have not, I could not have ever imagined. And that was speaking and writing on the topic of forgiveness. And he did this. Do you want me to just share the story now of Tim? Is, is that what you want me to do? No, that's fine. That's beautiful. So you are actually a, a cross-cultural art, art missionary. So, so how, yeah. how, that, how that blend in uh, in your calling? How can the, arts, the arts also came out of my... The story that, that started this journey of forgiveness is also the story that started my journey of serving God in art and it was in during my darkest days of my my grief uh, we were living in vienna austria and i was hiding out to get out of the snow but not just wanting to be out of the home as i grieved and sought to find and reconnect with god after the murder of our son and in those days god met me he not only spoke to me of being the original abstract artist and that he would take the brokenness of my life and heart and make something beautiful for, from it. He gave me a new calling and that was to find and encourage artists. I didn't know any artists. I didn't know why they needed to be encouraged. 
I didn't know how to encourage him. So I just started seeking out artists anywhere we went in Europe and listening to their stories. And in listening to stories of artists of faith, I heard the heartbreak, the alienation, and the, the, the real deep loneliness these artists felt because their church did not understand or embrace them. So eventually I did my doctoral dissertation a cultural exploration on the role of visual art in the churches, free churches of Europe. And since then, I'm now serving as the, um, the uh, Europe ministry director of artists and Christian testimony. I also have a local arts ministry called Art Charlotte that seeks to encourage arts artists, not only in their, their arts, but in their spiritual walk. Wow, such a fascinating ministry to bring in, uh, as God said, through your, our all heart, and heart come with art. So yeah. if you know, he and art, so <laughs> I realized that's that one. True. That's so, true. So that's great, that's great story, and especially your academic background, and then how you, you connected these two uh, highly creative, imaginative uh, uh, paths together crossing. I know, I know it's not easy, and especially when judge folks and those who, those in a theological area arena, those who don't understand this imagination and how they are going to work. I'm still struggling with my missiological pieces of psalms and and the music and art to bring it in. But however, so today we are talking about um, a very sensitive and a very important topic, which is forgiveness. And 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 especially in this uh, the pandemic and this 2020. When 2020 was really a brutal and a bitter for lots of lots of millions of people in this world, not only the experience experienced personal losses, but we have seen our loved one uh, uh, have been taken away. We have seen our businesses have been taken away. We have seen our homes and lots of lots of disaster 2020 brought to the global world, and we are more bitter. But today, Dr. Diane's story will help us how can we go from bitterness to a beautiful betterness and dr uh, dr dayan would you please share something about with us uh, how this book comes out which i encountered and saw a fascinating uh resource not only as a communal level but personal and family level so how come how this idea of this book came into your mind. First of all, I would like to tell my uh, my audience and those who are watching right now that uh, I choose to forgive an intimate journey first published in 2010, although she was working before that, but it come out in 2011. Uh, my eyes caught that. I contacted her and graciously, generously, she accepted my request. I received a copy in Pakistan. We translated, we published, and she also raised funds and helped us to uh, to promote. And that has been launched in, in four cities of Pakistan, widely accepted and received by the evangelical literature bookshops and vans and other people. And it's very well received. And I would like to show, tell you, it has been translated in 17 languages. Such, yeah, such incredible, uh, incredible uh, research. Dr. Dayan, would you please like to share the background, the concept behind that book? Well, it began in, in the, the deepest, the most difficult time of my life. We were serving in Europe, living in Vienna, got the word that our eldest son in California had been brutally murdered during the night. And you can imagine, I don't have time to go through all the details of all the questions I had, all the challenges to my faith, um, all those issues of, of, is God good? Can I trust him? All of those things. But, but God put me on in his time, and it was a process on the journey of forgiveness. And I first had to learn what forgiveness was and what it isn't. I had to learn what God meant by forgiveness. And I had to come walk that journey for myself. So as I walked it, God gave me opportunity to share the journey with others in small Bible studies and different places. I didn't set out to do a book that was translated in 17 languages. I was just walking my journey with God because I knew in order to have the fullness of God and his, his power and his strength in my life, I had to be obedient. And he had called me to obey 
because he loves me and he knows the damage that forgiveness, unforgiveness does. He knows the power of freedom when we choose to forgive. And many people, as I, as I would do speak about it, would ask me, do you have it in writing? Can, can I take it home? Can, because this is something I'm going to have to work and pray over. Uh, please put it in writing. And so in 2010, I wrote it. In 2011, it was first published. Having no idea that God had a, an international marketing plan, that he was going to show this on, and have somebody from Pakistan who sees it and says, I want this. I could have never made this plan. But God did. And he it and why? Because it's the message that every person has to consider. Sometime or many times in their life, does God really expect me to forgive? It's a universal question. And that's why God needed the wanted the story, wanted the message to be put in a book so that it could be given out and people could learn that. The absolute beauty of the freedom of forgiveness. Well, thank you very much. As we are all facing such turmoil and um, and the tender call of forgiveness, which is a divine character, especially. And I think the Christmas season, especially, this is an incredible season because that lead us to lots of lots of relational problems when people are even suiciding in this month rather than embracing community and embracing God's gift, people are, are, are they are dying. So, the, so this is incredible work. And what challenges have you faced? Like, because I know it's hard for a mother to share the story of forgiveness to the murderer of, the, of, of, of her son. So what challenges and, 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 and what sustained you actually uh, to, to, to go through this writing process and not only writing, but also then sharing with the, uh, and with the various communities? You know, God is so patient. And if we take, if we obe are obedient at each stage that he presents to us, then he, he leads us to another one. And that's what he did with me in forgiveness. And I thought, and I think I had done everything I knew to do to forgive this man. But one time, one morning in my devotions, in my uh, study, he brought me to a verse that I had read many times, but never seen it as God showed it to me that day. And it was 1 Peter 3, 9, that I wasn't only to, to forgive the person, I was to bless him. And I said, God, I can't bless him. Up to that point, I had never even spoken the man's name because he had become a monster in my mind, a monster that had killed my child. And, and God said, well, the first thing you do is start praying for him by name. And when I did, he ceased to be a monster. He became a man, a man whom God loved, whom Christ died for. So I began praying and, and, then God very clearly said, I want you to share this possibility of forgiveness with this man. And it's a long story of how I had to find him, how I came in contact with him in the prison, because they don't want, the prison system does not accept a mother to try to reach the murderer of her child. And so God provided a way for me to, to make contact. And that began, began, be, began years of what's called Letters to a Murderer. In fact, the German translation, that's the name of the book, Letters to a Murderer. And I began writing to him. Um, my brother, who's a pastor in California, got permission to meet with him. And one thing led to another until he came to faith in Jesus Christ. And then ultimately, you know, I believe that he, he needed to pay the whatever the law said he was to pay in terms of the consequences but ultimately we glenn and i felt very strongly that we needed to work to get him out of prison which we did and and he's living in la and struggling i have to admit he learned to walk with christ in prison found it very different to walk with christ on the streets of la 
but we continue to pray for him. And I can honestly say, I know people won't believe this, but I can honestly say I love the murderer of my son. God has given me a love for this man. Wow, wow. This is such an incredible spiritual journey. I know this is kind of awakening. It is, it is, it is counterintuitive. Yes. We as a human being, uh, even somebody has said something against us, even somebody have given us a loss of my, my materialistic loss, might be emotional loss, but the loss of a son and a soul, and then taking the departure from this bitterness to meeting to a letters to murder, and then calling and a blessing. That, that's incredible, incredible. Uh, you know, you know, I can't believe that still even, you know, uh, that how, how, can, how can a person can do that? And not only yourself, but we will come to later that point. You open the door, not only uh, for your, to raise and add your voice, but also to add father voice, then the other family members voice into this journey. And uh, this is interestingly, uh, and, 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 uh, and incredibly unbelievable that how become a source of a blessing, a person who has gave to you such a great loss and a pain. But we see that, that this, is, this, is, this is impossible without God's spirit. This is impossible without a call. We are living in a world, especially a context where I came uh, from the Pakistani context, the Muslim context, you know, where we have everything you have to take revenge. You have to show your strength. You have to show that you are not weak and uh, taking a law or taking the uh, taking the revenge into your own hands, and especially in American context, you know, where we show that we need guns, we need to protect ourselves, you know, and a gun yes. room and everything. Oh. So we show our strength rather than weaknesses. We show, but this is a totally, totally countercultural, counterintuitive. And this is a gift, actually, I think. This is a blessing which God has given us to become a channel of blessing, as God called Abraham that you will be blessed person, but you will become a channel of blessing to the nation. And we think all about in a spiritual mind or in a materialistic way, but forgiveness is a model. Forgiveness is another virtue. And I would call it forgiveness as a missionary model, as a mission model, rather than, rather than developing uh, a, a missionary enterprises, but yes. showing God's character and forgiveness. So tell us more about so you added, you visited, you met, you redeemed, you rescued that person. And uh, along, along, and I met, uh, like I can share with, the, with my audience uh, a story when, uh, when I was planning to come here in, uh, in Southern California for starting my PhD at Fuller. So I didn't have my residence or anything because you know I was totally on by my own. I've only received a scholarship for my tuition and uh, my friends and, uh, uh, and a church in Grand Rapids uh, they supported me just to arrive here and to and to and to and to be alive, but I didn't have lodging. Interestingly, Dr. Dayan was visiting uh, Christian in Visual Arts Conference in Grand Rapids just a week earlier. This is an incredible story. Mm -hmm. So just a week earlier, and uh, I was still praying. Okay, God, I have admission, I have tuition, I have everything. I have my flight is booked, but I don't know where I'm going to stay. So, so she called, she I saw her and she said, I'm in Grand Rapids. She texted me. I said, okay, where are you? Let's meet. So we met and she said, what's now? What are you doing? I said, I'm leaving. I'm going to LA. She said, LA, where are you going? So I told her, I'm accepted. And she said, where are you staying? I said, I don't know yet. And can you believe I have only one week to arrive? So she written to a friend who is an art professor here, Dr. Maria P. And they were out for three weeks in Canada and their house right on the campus was totally free. So interestingly, God's timing was so perfect. I have been received and then I have a lodging to stay until I found another uh, place. So this is how God's incredible work. And then I met uh, again uh, twice, uh, uh, Dr. Diane, when she visited LA and then last year we visited North Carolina again. And it's such a fascinating and a blessing to meet these both husband and wife and such a humble, such a great uh, servants of God. So how how does this all work with your family? So we we saw that the first book published, then it went out around the world, and then and then it impressed and inspired lots of people. And then now we have a second version and uh, uh, second version. So how how this has been? How it is different from the first version? The second version is an expanded version. 
It has the original book with the original My Journey and my journey of meeting the, the no, I hadn't met, my journey of connecting with the, the murderer. But this second book, uh, which is what I would ask everybody to, to order if they're going to order, because it has my husband's journey of forgiveness from, from a man who's a godly man who dealt with the desire to, to take revenge. He didn't know he could hate somebody so badly. And yet God brought him to a point of forgiving the murder of our son. And he has his story. Our daughter, who, who was in California when this happened and was on the front lines of the police telling her, seeing the body, all of that, had post-traumatic stress disorder for a number of years. And she gives her story of how she's gone from fear to freedom because of forgiveness. And there is the story in the murderer's own, partially the murderer's own words of how God used my journey in his life to bring him to the freedom of forgiveness of, with Christ and how he is, has come to that freedom. So we have those three added. And I think it's powerful to see the the husbands, the fathers, the, the man's view, and then a sibling's view, and then the murderer's view of what this meant. Well, such a trajectory and such a mosaic of, um, of, of this uh, uh, expressions in this book, I would love to have and grab this copy as well as, um, uh, but, but beside that, uh, uh, you were sharing with me about, uh, about the video project of this, uh, of this story, how, where it is now and uh, which condition it is. Yeah. Um, Mako Fujimura and Paul Nethercott have produced a short video, 16 minutes, um, as, as an introduction to my story. And it, it is called Abstraction, and it tells the journey of, of coming to know God as the creator, the abstract artist. And what that's done, it tells my journey of forgiveness and, and some with Glenn's story as well. It's a great introduction. It is not available yet online or on the internet, but if anybody would want to contact me, I can send a copy to them with a password and they can, they can view this and they can use it to share with their Bible study or small group, whatever. Um, it's available for that, but um, so far I can't just give you a YouTube channel to go to. I wish I could, but um, yeah, it's powerful because it's the visual of seeing. We've got a lot of pictures of Tim as he was growing up. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I really encourage people to see abstraction. Well, so we have seen that it's, uh, uh, as it's, she, she just said that, her daughter used the, the term from fear to freedom. And uh, this is what actually everybody wants, every human need a freedom from fear and yes. from, uh, from, the, from the bitterness of unforgiveness. So I, I still recall in the first, uh, in the first book, there was a one quotation. Uh, please correct me if I, if I uh, paraphrasing wrong. And it says that unforgiven person is like a person who drinking uh, poison for himself, assuming that his opponent will die. So, uh, so, so yeah, that, it, it, it's the idea that if you have rats in your house and you want to get rid of them, you buy poison. But instead of giving the poison to the rats, you drink it. And that's what unforgiveness, that's what bitterness is. It's a poison. It's a cancer to our soul, to our, to our emotional life, to our relationships to our relationship with God. And, and that's why God says that we are to forgive because he wants to protect us from that. Forgiveness is not, a, a com all of God's commands are given for one or two reasons, either to give us something good or to protect us from harm. The command to forgive protects us from the devastation of unforgiveness and bitterness and gives us freedom, freedom in Christ. And, and so 
you know, I, I don't want to drink the poison. I, I want to accept the freedom that God's provided. Well, that's interesting. There was another, another quotation I think I would like you to respond to that. And that was uh, forgiveness, and especially it's a DNA of God's character. So, so, so how, how, how's that, how's that play uh, in your story and especially for our audience? If they are claiming they are Christian, if they're claiming they are in a ministry, if they're claiming they are servants of God, how that DNA play a role into their lives? So many people think forgiveness is so unusual. You have to be some special kind of person. You, you know, you, you're, you're different than I am. And that's not true. As believers, God has called us to forgive just as God in Christ has forgiven us. Just as God's character is produced and he forgives. And that means unconditionally, undeservedly, totally and completely we are to forgive others. And then it is to become part of the normal Christian life. It is the way uh, followers of Christ, that should be the natural way that we, we live out in, the life, in, in our lives. Um, it, it's, it's to be that which demonstrates Christ, what he did on the cross, cross, when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is the essence of God's love. This is the essence of God himself. And it's what God places in us when we come to faith in Jesus Christ. And that's how we are to live on a normal basis. So, so this is, this is, this is actually um, a call. This is a call and a challenge both. Um, as we try to form ourselves spiritually. There are lots of courses, lots of head knowledge, lots of uh, intellectual exercises, right. and lots of practical, um, uh, we try to follow these steps actually to, uh, to become a better spiritual formed person. But I think if we are lacking the basic DNA of forgiveness, which is a part of God's heart and God poured that heart on cross, and that 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 heart reached yeah. in our generation, and Dr. Diane's story is a uh, really showcase. It is a practically showcase that how forgiveness is a common human exercise in a regular life, not as something special. You need a special kind of retreat somewhere in a mountain to attain that, but actually right. you need in your regular life, and this is possible through that story. And um, in my own life, um, uh, you know, in a ministry, especially, and in the, coming from a context, there are lots of lots of uh, bitterness. There's a lots of uh, challenges. There's lots of rejection you receive. I know uh, out there, people, those who are there in a ministry and a public ministry, and somewhere you have you have faced this rejection, this ridiculousness. You have faced that uh, hate without any any reason. You have faced injustice. You have faced lots of lots of things which has. Uh, which has raised in your heart and which has blocked the, uh, the power and the blessing of God to flow. So Dr. Dayan's story and this resource and this, uh, this testimony is, um, is a possibility for us as she do, we can do, we can, we can, we can do also. And the only thing is you need to choose actually. You know, God has given us free will. God has given us choice. Last night when we were having our devotion, my younger son, Ethan, he just ate, but he asked a very deep theological question. And, and he asked me uh, that if God knows that Adam and Eve are going to disobey, why he asked them not to eat from the tree? And I said, wow, that's a good question. And how can I answer that? So I, I tried to attempt. I said, well, God has given us a, a, a free will, a, a, a decision to choose, actually. God has not put a chip and a default mode that we have to follow this, 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 this. God has given as a human a free choice. This is my command. This is your choice. Are you going to be obedient or are you going to be uh, disobedient? The consequences will be God. And that's where our choice comes. Dr. Dayan, she chose to forgive. Let what me say you? that's the reason sure. I named the book, I choose to forgive, not I chose to forgive, I choose, because it is an ongoing choice. 
At any moment, I could choose to pick up that bitterness and resentment again. And any time some results of, 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 because this had implications that went throughout our family, caused all kinds of issues, ongoing, and every time they'd rise up, I could choose to either be resentful and, and hate this man for how, what he did, or I could choose to forgive. And I chose to forgive each time, despite my feelings, the, my feelings were not, oh, I feel good about forgiving. My feelings were God in your power, in your strength, I will choose to forgive because this is what you've asked of me. And I believe it's out of love that you've asked me to do it. And, and that changed things for me when I realized that this was out of God's love because he knew what was best for me. And, he, and I had no idea he was going to use me to bless others through this story. But I knew it's what I needed in order to grow and to be free, to, to be who he has called me to be. Yeah, so... I would like to challenge you, encourage, especially at this time of Christmas, and especially the, in 2020. We all need this forgiveness. We need to forgive ourselves. <laughs> we need to forgive, forgive circle, friends, family, loved ones around us who hurt us. We need to, uh, even um, a time and moment in these days, we have received lots of lots of news where people and family, they have lost their loved ones and they are bitter even they are raising questions. Uh, I was watching a movie, a trailer of the movie just came in fiddle with uh, James Carroll, who played a role in Passion of Christ, the story of a Christian blogger who, who, who was uh, abducted by the, uh, by the radicals in, in some kind of a Middle Eastern country. And his wife lost their only chance to become a mother. And she got astray from her faith. And she asked, and she told her husband, I am done with God. Mm -hmm. There are lots of people around the world, those who are watching and listening even, they felt that they are done with God. They have nothing to do with God because something brutal and bitter happened in their life. But Dr. Dayan's story and this incredible resource, I choose to forgive even in a video form. You can request as she graciously offered if you need for your church and for uh, in a privately uh, conversation, uh, she, she can, uh, you can contact with her. Books, both books are available extended version and the original version, but they both are incredibly, immensely powerful source will change their paradigm. And as a missiologist, I would see that forgiveness as a missional model. And, uh, and Dr. Dr. Dayan, might be you can, you can think about writing from this framework, this perspective, forgiveness as a missional model, because we, we, we try to find our traditional models of a Western mission, white person burden, to going somewhere, you know, and trying to redeem and rescue people without knowing. And I think this model of, of forgiveness and a fear to freedom model, I think that's an incredible model for, uh, for God's mission. And as God, the missionary father sent missionary son to the world mm -hmm. and the one of the major tools as Dr. Dayan shared, the cross, which mm -hmm. is a sign of forgiveness and reconciliation. That's what we need in this world. That's what we need to spread. That's what we need to uh, to make a pandemic. Actually, that's that's model of a pandemic of forgiveness in this time. Doctor Dan, thank you very much for your time and your incredible story. I would you like to say something to our viewers as a final thought? Just that forgiveness is a journey, and God has presented this today. You've heard this today that you would choose to start, you would take that first step of, uh, on that journey. And then seek my book, seek other, other information as you need it. Obey at each stage and God is gonna bring you to a place of experiencing the greatest freedom you have ever known. But you have to start today. Sure, stop today and stop drinking poison for yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> embrace Thank life you. embrace God's love and spread it may God bless you all Dr. Dayan thank you very much God bless you too and uh, all those who are watching God give you strength and power to overcome your bitterness and spread God's love and forgiveness God bless you all thank you very much bye bye Thank you.